So welcome friends, uh, this time connecting my mobile for seeing your comments. Hello, Sajan. Hello, Sajan. So, welcome. It started. So, audio, video, everything is fine in my other device. So, we are going to start the session now. <coughs> so, I hope most of you attend the session, attended the session on uh, leaderboard three test. So, very. A good some of you have got very good marks i saw the ranks some of you got out of one for uh, uh 140 marks most of you have got 100 plus thank you alia khan welcome welcome uh, surgeon of east so we are going to see an interesting session today on git so covering important aspects in git i am going to cover interesting aspects okay so let me start with the questions without wasting time because this is a one hour session the first question is taken directly from sabistan it's not a question of bailey and love image shown here is and sign which is pigmentation in umbilicus. Cullen sign is a pigmentation in the umbilicus in acute pancreatitis. Okay, all of you know that very well. This is a picture showing you Cullen sign, pigmentation around the umbilicus and in the lumbar region. This is Cullen sign, you all know very well. It is a very commonly asked question right from many years. Okay, it is a commonly asked question for many years. So, I am sure you all will be correct with this question. So, but the question is not asking about the Cullen sign here. I am very clear, clear in this question. I am not asking about the Cullen sign. I am going to ask you various other named rarely asked signs and the findings. This is from a table in Sabiston. So, especially need testers aspirants usually read this table thoroughly. Ranso half sign. It is a discoloration of umbilicus in CBD injury. So, it is correct statement. It is correct statement. So, the answer is A is correct. So, yellow discoloration of umbilicus due to CBD injury is correct. That is correct answer. Fothergill sign. So, Fothergill sign is an interesting sign seen in rectus sheath hematoma. In rectus sheath hematoma, please do not forget the swelling will not cross the midline. That is Fothergill sign. Fothergill sign is rectus sheath hematoma not crossing midline in rectus sheath hematoma. Rectus hematoma. Menkoff sign, remember Menkoff sign is to rule out malingering. Sometimes you can see small children, they will come to you shouting of pain. And when you palpate, they will be silent. When you palpate the abdomen, they will be remaining very silent. How to differentiate whether it is a malignant, uh, whether it is a malingering or really there is a pathology in the abdomen. If you compress the abdomen, if there is a real pathology, pulse rate increases. Okay. So, Menkoff sign is done to rule out malingering. In malingering, pulse rate will not increase. Malingering, pulse rate will not increase. So, Carnet sign is a sign known as leg raise test. So, leg raising test is to done to rule out pain from the parietal or from the intra-abdominal. Intra-abdominal pain will decrease. When I am lifting the leg, my muscles are tight and therefore, intra-abdominal organ pain will decrease. Whereas, a parietal wall pain will cause more tenderness. So, Ransoff, Ransokoff sign is yellow discoloration of umbilicus in CBD injury. Fothergill sign is seen in rectus sheath hematoma, the so hematoma not crossing the midline. Menkoff sign is to rule out malignancy. Please remember Menkoff sign you can use in practice also. When a patient coming to you with an abdominal pain and you feel they are hysterical, what you should do is you should compress the abdomen and see for change in pulse rate. If there is real pathology in the abdomen, the pulse rate will increase. Carnet sign is leg raising test the abdominal organ tenderness will decrease so very important 10 horn sign is not pain on passive flexion of hip 10 horn sign is seen in acute appendicitis though it is not commonly done 10 horn sign is a sign when i pull the testis there will be pain in the appendix area pulling the testis will cause pain in the appendix area okay so uh, so wrong answer the wrong matches d in the choice in the material, I think you got as ran so cough, it is wrong. So, it is D is the correct answer. So, those who have marked D, you are absolutely correct. 10 horn sign is pain on pulling the testis. So, can anybody tell me what is the pain in the appendix when I am pushing gas through the rectum? What is the sign? They are known as Aron sign. Aron sign is appendicitis pain on pushing gas in the rectum. So, please remember 10 horn sign, Aron sign and all we are not doing nowadays. Okay. There is an extraordinary table from Sabiston mentioning all the entire signs in abdomen. 
all the signs in the abdomen are mentioned in this so if you have time you can go through this sign in the in the in the app it is available so you, all the explanations are given same explanations are there in the app so no need to write notes you can go through the app elite uh, elite need pg discussion and you can understand okay yes sorry um, best ed sign is correct rajaneda you are correct absolutely correct best ed sign is pushing gas in the rectum causing right iliac fossa aran sign is also seen in appendicitis acute appendicitis when i compress the uh, pain or pressure in the epigastrium pain or pressure in the epigastrium or anterior chest with the persistent firm pressure applied to mcburney's point so when i completely compress the mcburney's point patient will have pain in the epigastric region aran sign is pain in the epigastric region air insufflation into the rectum causing appendicitis is best ed sign so best ed sign is air insufflation sign ten horn sign ten horn is just is pulling sign so these three signs are no more advised aron best ed ten horn none of them we advise they all will cause more cumbersome for the patient and the patient will go to another surgeon for surgery please remember this okay uh, welcome uh, shah manish that's uh, thank you so we are now going to see all the questions i have made in this chapter are pakka clinical questions suitable for i nice it 70 years old man mr ramu presents with the complaints of food sticking in the throat he is having cough and fever he was admitted in jipmer and was evaluated for covid 19 due to his respiratory symptoms his x-ray chest shows features of lung abscess in the right lobe duty surgeon opinion was given regarding drainage of abscess so the duty surgeon decided to drain the lung abscess surgeon who examined the patient suddenly ordered for a barium swallow on examination this is a barium swallow finding what is this this is a case of zenkers diverticulum very very good alia khan it is a case of zenkers diverticulum please remember it is not achalasia cardia it is a case of zenkers diverticulum ap view should not be used i should use a lateral oblique view you can see x-ray barium swallow should be a lateral oblique view then only i can see the posterior pouch laryngeal pouch is seen posteriorly i can see only in a lateral oblique view manometry is not needed for zenkers diverticulum the gold standard investigation is barium only barium is enough to diagnose endoscopy and manometry are not at all needed so there is a procedure known as endoscopic procedure done which can help in this patient having a permanent solution can anybody tell me tell me what is the endoscopic procedure done patient have poor results after surgery they have excellent result after surgery so the answer here is d so i want you to tell me what is the procedure done by endoscopy known as dolman's procedure so dolman's procedure is a procedure you see this is a zenkers diverticulum i will insert stapler inside i can insert stapler inside and i can staple these two together and now it becomes like this there is a common lumen so there will be no dysphagia no aspiration this is known as dolman's procedure but the point is it can be done only for more than three size three centimeter size diverticulum so dolman's procedure is it's dolman it is dolman harish so yes square very good it is dolman's procedure it can be done only for more than three centimeters it can be only done for more than three centimeters not useful for not possible for less than three centimeters therefore for less than three centimeters we have to do surgical procedure like diverticulectomy should be done so diverticulectomy should be done for less than three centimeter diverticulum more than three centimeter you should go for a dolman's procedure so the excellent explanation is given there in the material so please go through the explanation i'll be discussing only the question related point but all the explanation is given in the material so regarding investigations of acute appendicitis all these questions are from bailey and sabiston regarding acute appendicitis true statement is what so true statement is please remember x-ray shows pneumoperitoneum in perforated appendicitis wrong it is less than five percent cases only you see air under diaphragm in perforated appendicitis because of the valve known as gerlach valve gerlach valve of appendix prevents the gas coming out from the cecum therefore neoperitoneum is not seen in appendicitis ct abdomen with oral and rectal contrast is an investigation of choice never give rectal contrast it is already a perforated appendix if i give rectal contrast it can leak out just ct abdomen with iv contrast alone is enough normal appendix is up to less than 7 mm thick okay normal appendix is less than 7 mm thick and it is compressible 
on ultrasound on ultrasound normal appendix is less than 7 mm and it is compressible appendicitis is diagnosed by more than 7 mm appendix non compressible with the finding known as target sign target sign or a blind ending non blind ending loop okay these are the findings in appendicitis ultrasound but ideally it is 80% only sensitive that is correct it is 80% only sensitive so please remember ultrasound is 80 percent sensitive ct abdomen with oral rectal contrast is the investigation of choice for appendicitis normal appendix is less than 7 millimeter mri with the gadolium contrast is used in pregnant women so please remember the uh, uh, correct answer is e mri with gadolinium contrast is not advised no need of contrast so s square the investigation of choice for zinc zincus is only barium swallow sorry barium swallow nothing else is needed okay X-ray shows only 5% cases are under diaphragm. CT scan is done with oral and rectal administration of contrast is not recommended. Ultrasound is 80% sensitive. MRI is reserved for pregnant patients and sensitivity is 100%. Specificity is 98% with MRI. And please remember, without contrast agents, MRI is done. No need of contrast agents. The highest sensitivity, specificity and positive predictive value is for MRI especially in pregnant females okay so please remember bailey says ct can be done in second trimester if mri is not available i can do ct abdomen nothing wrong if mri is not available ct abdomen can be done in second trimester okay please remember this question so next coming six or seven questions are very interesting questions which are image based questions from endoscopy and colonoscopy please don't forget these questions are very simple and essential questions 50 years male Mr. Kumar underwent renal transplantation 3 years back. 3 years back he was on immunosuppression now. Now he presented to a GI surgeon with a severe painful dysphagia. He is having a painful dysphagia. Patient undergoes endoscopy in RRM gastroendoscopy center and the finding is given below. What is your diagnosis? So this is a classical finding of geographical ulcer. Geographical ulcer also known as serpentine ulcer. Serpentine or geographical ulcer is seen in cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus. Please see these images. <coughs> CMV shows geographical and serpentine ulcer. Herpes simplex shows punched out ulcer. Cardi white patches are seen in diabetic patients having candidiasis. Esophageal candidiasis shows this cardi white patch. Okay, please do not forget image questions from endoscopy of esophagus mrs kannagi 40 years female had a serious bout of vomiting following which she had a bout of hematemesis vomited followed by hematemesis the initial food particles are coming out fresh blood came in the second vomitus only referred to gastroscopy center and we did the endoscopy showing you a classical finding of Tear. It is a classical finding of tear. Mallory V star is seen. Please remember it is a Mallory V star seen in the esophagus. Mallory V star is seen in the esophagus. Mallory V star is most common in OG junction area. In the OG junction, esophagogastric junction, in the lesser curve near proximal cardia, usually get this. So, Mallory V star tear can develop most commonly in the lesser curve of stomach. Please remember I am showing you the site. It is most common in this place. Second common in this esophagus also. You can see the second common spot of esophageal tear you are seeing Mallory V star. So please remember nothing to worry. It is self-limiting. Bleeding will stop automatically. Bleeding will stop automatically. Okay. 40 years old Mr. Ramu came to hospital with odinophagia, painful dysphagia. Ramu is having a painful dysphagia. Endoscopy was advised as a part of investigation. Endoscopy shows a finding, very interesting finding. What is this? This is a finding known as trachea like esophagus. You see, a esophagus looks like a trachea. So, as if we have entered a esophagus, we have entered a trachea, the appearance looks like this. This is known as eosinophilic esophagitis. This is a picture of eosinophilic esophagitis. So, picture showing you eosinophilic esophagitis, trachea like esophagus is seen. Trachea like esophagus is seen. Please do not forget this. On a barium, any barium swallow, most of you will know the answer. It is feline appearance, like a black and white stripes are seen on endoscopy, like this. On a barium swallow, you have a black and white stripe lines that is due to feline esophagus. Yes, very good, Suman. That is a feline on barium swallow, absolutely correct. 
35 years female Mrs. Malati having GRD past 2 years went to KFC and during eating suddenly had a sensation of food stuck in the esophagus. When she is eating suddenly there is a food stuck. Patient underwent an endoscopy and she is having a ring in the lower end of esophagus. This is known as Skatsky ring. The classical clinical feature of Skatsky ring is episodic intermittent dysphagia is the finding of Skatsky ring. It is a cause is most important cause of Skatsky ring is GRD. So, the treatment is going to be very easy. We have to go for endoscopic dilatation. The treatment of Skatsky ring is endoscopic dilatation. So, please remember simple question on Skatsky ring. These are easy questions. You should never make mistake in images of scopy. So, you can see a Skatsky ring and another condition of dysphagia in an iron deficiency patient known as siderophenic dysphagia. Siderophenic dysphagia patients will have a web in the post cricoid region. It is a web, simple web, but it cannot be easily dilated. It might need the treatment known as laser lysis. Laser lysis may be needed for these type of cases because these will cause dysphagia and also these post cricoid webs will predispose to malignancy. Okay, they will predispose to malignancy also. So, very interesting point. This is seen in siderophenic dysphagia, also known as plumber vincent syndrome also known as patterson kelly syndrome they will come to you with iron deficiency anemia chylonychia and post cricoid webs mrs kamachi 50 years old lady presented with the melina past three months she is coming to you with the melina for the past three months iron deficiency anemia is also present on endoscoping the following finding is seen in the stomach on endoscopy you are seeing a classical finding like this what is this finding this is a finding known as Watermelon like appearance of stomach, okay. Watermelon appearance of stomach. Watermelon like appearance of stomach is also known as gastric vascular entrectasia, known as GAVE. So, the treatment of GAVE is APC, organ plasma coagulation of the ectatic vessels. Ectasia means dilated vessels. Ectatic vessels should be uh, treated by APC, organ plasma coagulation. Very good, very good. Prajya, very good. Um, uh, square, very good. Aliakan. Prajya Suman, all of you are correct. It is a watermelon stomach known as GAVE. Known as GAVE. Okay. Another interesting question. 10 year old boy with a severe hypoproteinemia was referred by the pediatrician for endoscopy to me. I did an endoscopy and you see the finding. What is the finding on endoscopy in the stomach? The stomach looks like a brain. What is this disease? This is known as menetrius disease. It is also known as protein losing gastropathy. Please do not forget. Protein losing gastropathy is a congenital condition. We call it as menetrius disease. What actually happens here is the gastric mucosa is looking like a brain, cerebriform like appearance. Hypertrophy of gastric mucosa due to the replacement of parietal cells are replaced by mucus secreting cells. Because of this mucus secreting cells, there is a continuous lose of protein patient goes for hypoproteinemia and very interesting this is predisposing for cancer stomach menetrius this is a predisposing condition for cancer stomach please do not forget the growth factor elevated as tgf alpha is increased in these cases so tgf alpha is excessively increased in these cases okay very good so very good tgf alpha is increased in these cases the patient is having continuous loss, we have to go for gastrectomy also. So, elevated TGF alpha is found. It is associated with the CMV in children, H. pylori in adults. Okay, H. pylori in adults. See the classical brain like appearance. This endoscopy is a J manure. You can see this is an endoscopy. I hope you know what is J manure. This is an endoscopy. I am doing a J manure like this. At that time, I am seeing this hiatus is fully loose. And there is a hiatal hernia seen and there is an ulcer here, vertical riding ulcer. What is it known as? So, hiatus hernia, you are noting a vertical riding ulcer over the proximal stomach like this. This is known as Cameroon ulcer. You should know it is Cameroon ulcer. Cameroon ulcers are vertical riding ulcers. Okay. Please do not forget. Very good, Suman. That is correct. It is a vertical riding ulcer. So, you are seeing an interesting endoscopy here. This endoscopy is having two balloons attached to the tip. Do, through these balloons, what I can do is I can inflate one balloon and I can push it, then I can deflate, push it like that. I can walk through the small bubble. I can walk through the small bubble known as double balloon endoscopy. 
this is known as double balloon scopy and this is used to examine the jejunum i can go up to 240 to 360 centimeter of small bowel i can go inside antegrade through the mouth i can examine up to 240 360 centimeter using this balloon balloon double balloon endoscopy okay double balloon endoscopy that is correct uh, most of you have answered the question correctly. So, do not forget double balloon endoscopy. So, next important endoscopy procedure this procedure done in the image is done for you can see in this image there is something kept like a mesh nothing but a self expanding metal stent it is like a self expanding metal stent kept into the esophagus this is also known as SIMS. It is usually used for inoperable cancers. Please remember inoperable cancers. Inoperable esophageal malignancy, we keep SEMS. Very good, Rajan. Very good. So, inoperable cancer esophagus, we keep a SEMS, self expanding metallic stent. Okay. This image shown in the endoscopy is a classical image. You can see there is something put like black color band and there is something bulging like that. What is it? It is a procedure known as endoscopic banding for bleeding esophageal varices so please don't forget esophageal varices we will put a band known as endoscopic banding okay this is a picture of endoscopic banding for a bleeding esophageal varices so you can see what i am having in my hand is a capsule endoscopy this is a classical picture of capsule endoscopy i think we have discussed in previous test series also capsule endoscopy which of the following statement is false about the image shown here so it is a capsule of 20 it's a it's a capsule of a very big size capsule the size of the capsule is 26 millimeter cross 11 millimeter 26 millimeter cross 11 millimeter it is containing camera light source battery everything is inside the battery life is 8 hours the patient has to swallow it it will go inside the stomach into the jejunum ileum up to the terminal ileum it will pass and take photographs 2 image per second totally 50,000 images are taken by this capsule endoscopy mainly this is used for looking for bleeding in the small bubble major uses to look for small bubble bleeding or for Crohn's disease these are the main two uses to identify small bubble bleeding and to identify the Crohn's disease we use this very costly around 25,000 rupees so which is false regarding this image it has to be swallowed 8 hours battery life yes the most common complication this of this is it can get obstructed in the small bubble when there is a stricture. So, retention is a major complication. It is not used to diagnose duodenal ulcer bleeding. Duodenal bleeding can be diagnosed with endoscopy. It is only for ileal and the jejunal bleeding we use this capsule endoscopy. Please remember the only complication of this is capsule retention which is seen in 30 percent most common in Crohn's disease patients. So, please go through the explanation. I have given extraordinary explanation for most of the questions. If you go through them, definitely you can crack extraordinary questions in INI set. This purpose of this, though this series is known as a neat PG allied series, surgery I have made it only for INI set because very close to the INI set we are therefore, I more, made more questions for INI set. 8 year old man presents with bleeding per rectum frequently and the colonoscopy is done. So, colonoscopy shows what is this finding, what are these? These are nothing but diverticulosis, multiple diverticulum. So, diverticulosis, diverticulosis is the most common cause of bleeding per rectum in old age. Old age, massive bleeding per rectum is because of these diverticulosis. Actually, this is not the investigation of choice. Diverticulosis, investigation of choice is barium enema. Can you tell me what finding will be seen in diverticulosis? Yes, what finding is there? Uh, it is diverticulosis, Ram Subaradi. It is not a Crohn's disease, it is diverticulosis. Can you tell me what is the gold standard to diagnose? It is, please do not forget, it is barium enema, and that will show you sad tooth appearance. That will show you sad tooth appearance on barium enema will be seen. Please do not forget, it will show you sad tooth appearance on barium enema. So, here you are seeing an interesting finding of ultrasound in congenital hypertropic pyloric stenosis. Congenital hypertropic pyloric stenosis ultrasound finding is a AIMS question, it is a repeated AIMS question. So, congenital hypertropic pyloric stenosis is a condition in which the pylorus is thickened and lengthened. Which muscle is hypertrophied in congenital hypertropic pyloric stenosis? It is circular muscle which is hypertrophied please do not forget it is circular muscle hypertrophied when i see by ultrasound this is thickened to 4 mm 
and lengthen to 6 m 16 mm this is the finding i see i have an ultrasound finding showing you 4 mm thickness 16 mm lengthened and there will be nothing in the stomach because the baby is going to vomit everything there will be nothing in the stomach so there is a non bilious vomiting baby will have nothing in the stomach investigation of choice is ultrasound so the answer a b c are correct d is wrong there will be nothing no gastric residue in congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so old test these are all old tests nobody is doing these tests now this is barium meal you can see the barium meal showing you string sign string sign in the pylorus and this is looking also like a mushroom sign string sign in pylorus and mushroom sign are all findings of congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis but no one does these findings all are diagnosed with ultrasound classical ultrasound so this is a, this is actually a tough question for a neat pg exam it is actually a neat tests and ini set question i only want you to remember what is pittsburgh score pittsburgh score is a score used for esophageal perforation to find out the morbidity and mortality so you all know very well esophageal perforation is a very dangerous complication and there is going to be high mortality if they come after 24 hours one of the most common cause of uh, perforation you should remember is boerhaave syndrome rupture of esophagus boerhaave syndrome so with various findings we are now going to give a score so the finding the score points include age of the patient respiratory rate presence of cancer time of diagnosis more than 24 hours please remember gold standard time or golden period is less than 24 hours if the if it crosses 24 hours the mortality increases so pittsburgh score does not include sex of the patient this is from sabiston you can see age included pulse rate increase included wbc count included pleural effusion fever non contained leak it's a diffuse leak respiratory rate increased time of diagnosis more than 24 hours patient is in shock will have three points cancer will have three points so if the score is more than 5 see the mortality 27% mortality so when the score increases mortality rate increases especially when a boerhaave syndrome comes to you very late there is high mortality in boerhaave syndrome so please don't forget don't forget to read boerhaave syndrome the basic question of boerhaave syndrome is macklers triad macklers triad in boerhaave syndrome includes vomiting patient is vomiting having a chest pain and now third is having a subcutaneous emphysema this is known as macklers triad vomiting chest pain subcutaneous emphysema is seen in macklers triad macklers triad features are vomiting chest pain subcutaneous emphysema okay so it's a nice question please don't forget macklers triad blatchford score there are two important scores with related to upper gi bleed these are classical ini set question upper gi bleeding patient coming to you with the hematemesis we have to score them regarding whether there is a uh, you have to screen the patients at risk of serious bleeding so screening investigation screening score is blatchford score patient had hematemesis admitted in your hospital you are going to do a screening score to know whether this fellow will develop a high risk of bleeding so for that we use some variables urea is used blood urea nitrogen is used hemoglobin is used blood pressure yes systolic bp is also used endoscopy findings are not included because it's a screening investigation not a definitive investigation in a screening investigation you not worry you can just do a screening investigation will show you endoscopy findings are not included this is the blatchford score so blatchford score is a non endoscopy score the name itself is non endoscopy score used for only screening it incorporates blood urea hemoglobin bp pulse rate are all included to predict the need of therapeutic intervention with the transfusion endoscopy and surgery so blatchford score gives an outline whether we need a blood transfusion endoscopy or surgery a score of score of greater than 0 please remember a score greater than 0 as a sensitivity of 99% in predicting the need of such intervention the score can serve as a useful screening tool okay it is a screening tool to find out which patients are at risk of serious bleeding please note endoscopy findings are not included mcq will be always whenever they ask you blatchford score please remember blatchford score will not include endoscopy okay doesn't include endoscopy very good square it's very good so blatchford score will not use endoscopy very good prajya the next question will have endoscopy included that is known as rock call score it is a risk predicting score 
it is a risk predicting score of re-bleeding and in hospital mortality. So, please do not forget Blatchford is a screening score, Rockall score is a risk predicting and in hospital mortality score as the following variables except it includes yes it includes lot of things it, it will not include blood urea nitrogen which is used in Blatchford score it will include endoscopy, age, BP, comorbidities this is the score age of the patient, shock of the patient, comorbidities like heart failure, ischemic heart disease or any other major renal failure, metastatic cancer all are included. So, diagnosis on endoscopy, Mallory V star C 0 risk, all other diagnosis will have 1 risk, 2 will have cancer risk see cancer has 2 points, all other diagnosis have 1 point, Mallory V star I told you it will heal by itself 0 points, stigmata of recent hemorrhage we have to see for any endoscopy, it is done on endoscopy. So, it will show you blood in the upper GAT, udder and clot visible or spurting vessel of forest classification I hope you all know very well. Where is forest classification used in? So, please do not forget there are 3 scoring systems in upper GI hemorrhage, Blatchford all these are from Sabiston, it is a screening score which does not include you remember it does not include endoscopy because in any exam they will include endoscopy in the choice. Rock call score, rock call score is a risk predicting score, risk predicting score it will include endoscopy and also factors, also some factors. There is one more score all of you know very well forest classification, forest classification is an endoscopic classification of bleeding duodenal ulcer, please do not forget bleeding duodenal ulcer endoscopy classification is known as forest classification. So, Blatchford, Rock Call, Forest all these are used in upper GI hemorrhage scoring ok. Spigelman classification I, uh, though you are not going to read in depth of what is there inside you know the names of scores because these names might be asked in NEET exam as well as in FMG exam the names will be asked. Spigelman classification for duodenal adenomas arising in FAP cases include the following except. So, you all know very well the second common cancer for FAP patients, familial adenomatous polyposis patient the most common cancer is colorectal cancer. Second cancer is duodenal cancers, please remember duodenal and periampullary cancers are second common. Therefore, from 25 years onwards I should do endoscopy screening for these cancers. So, on endoscopy we will see multiple polyps like this, multiple polyps we see in the duodenum. And I am going to do a grading with this help of polyps that includes number of polyps, size of the polyps, dysplasia in the polyps and what histology it is not about the location. So, we have to know grade them based on number of polyps, size of polyps, degree of dysplasia and histology this is the question from Sabiston again. So, number of polyps, polyp size, histology, degree of dysplasia we score them 1, 2, 3 and when it is stage 4 there is 9 to 12 points. So, when it is stage 4 we should operate the case should be operated by Whipple's ok. So, Whipple's operation should be done very good, uh, very good Rajan very good that is correct and this S square you are absolutely correct location is not included number of polyps, polyp size, histology, tubular, tubular villus, villus, degree, mild, moderate, severe, give points and classify accordingly the answer is E location of polyps. False treatment regarding the disease shown here it is actually a not surgical question it is a medicine question, please remember it is a medicine question. In this there is villus atrophy, you can see the villus is atrophied and the crypts are going deeper, the crypts are hypertrophy, the crypts are getting hypertrophy, what is this case? What is this case? Please tell me, crypts are hypertrophied and villus is atrophy, villus atrophy with the crypt hypertrophy is seen in a uh, disease very common in UK not seen in India it is known as celiac disease, it is known as celiac disease very good. Celiac disease is due to conception of wheat, rye, barley. So, it is due to conception of wheat, rye and barley very good Ranjan. Surgical resection is not advised, celiac disease can go for lymphoma only for lymphoma going celiac disease cases we will resect. Otherwise celiac disease is treated by medical management, two methods it is diagnosed anti endomycial antibody is highly sensitive and specific, duodenal biopsy is must to confirm the diagnosis HLA B8 is associated with this disease, it is associated with HLA B8. So, anti endomycial antibody is correct, duodenal biopsy is correct. So, please remember 
Atropic will leave the deep crepes. Children will show growth retardation, steatorrhea. Adults will show iron deficiency anemia. They might also have dermatitis herpetiformis, skin disease. Dermatitis herpetiformis, most sensitive is anti endomycel antibody, but duodenal biopsy is always needed to confirm the diagnosis. They may go for adenocarcinoma and lymphoma only for those cases we operate. We do not operate for any other case. Very important and interesting case of celiac disease. Mr. Somu from southern part of India presents with weight loss, evening rise of temperature, okay, it is a TB, vague abdominal pain. On examine of this abdomen is having a dovey consistency, no doubt it is a TB. A mass felt in the right iliac fossa, barium meal showing this picture. Image shown is here, what is this? A barium meal follow through says, the cecum should be here, it is now pulled up. This is a case of ileo cecal TB. Please remember it is a case of ileocecal TB. In ileocecal TB, there are two types. It is a case of hyperplastic TB. It is a ileocecal TB and in ileocecal TB, we have two types. It is hyperplastic TB. So, now let me tell you the points of hyperplastic TB. Do not forget there are two types of TB, hyperplastic and ulcerative TB. Hyperplastic TB is due to mycobacterium bovis infection of drinking cow's milk without cooking. That goes and attacks the terminal ileum. Absolutely, go and attack the terminal ileum. And the terminal ileum is having the patient is very healthy patient. So the terminal ileum becomes hypertrophied and thickened, and it becomes narrowed. This becomes hypertrophied, thickened, and narrowed, and it pulls up the cecum because of this. The signs seen are in barium are string sign of cantor, stearlin sign, pulled up cecum pulled up cecum, fleshner sign, umbrella sign, all these are used in those days. All these signs are findings of hyperplastic TB. All these are findings of hyperplastic TB. Now, we are not using any of these signs. Now, we are not using any of these signs. String, stearlin, pulled up, fleshner, all are not needed because we can diagnose this by means of colonoscopy. Helio colonoscopy is at highly ideal. I have to go in, I can take biopsy from the lesions, iliochronoscopy is gold standard investigation. So, what is the treatment for this case? This case is once I confirm it is TB, I should start ATT, ATT started immediately and after starting ATT, after starting ATT, we should plan for limited resection in future, limited resection is done in future. By chance, this patient is coming to you with an intestinal obstruction. Now, I have, I could not resect because patient is having an intestinal obstruction. I will do a simpler surgery. See, this is an obstruction here in this place. It is not ideal to go and resect and do the anastomosis. So, what we surgeons do is, we do a bypass like this, ileo transverse bypass. This is done usually, temporarily. I will start a ileo transverse bypass, start ATT and I do not leave the patient as such. I will ask him to come back after 3 to 6 months of the patient becoming healthy. I will resect this segment because otherwise this segment will become a blind loop syndrome. So, you have to definitely do right hemicolectomy after some time. That is a very interesting question. Okay. So, let us see the choices now. So, this is a direct question from uh, Sabiston. So, no confusion. This occurs when the host resistance is upper hand. That means, you are very healthy person, you can get hyperplastic TB. Yes, important differential diagnosis, Crohn's disease because it is also having sterling sign, string sign and all. Patient presents with intestinal obstruction. Interferon gamma assay is used to diagnose. Okay, let it be a screening or diagnosis. Yes, we can use it. After bypass procedure for obstruction, after completing ATT, if no disease is present, no treatment needed, it is wrong. We have to do right hemicolectomy. We have to do right hemicolectomy. Yes, why I do not dissect during the acute time? Because acute time, you just know very well, TB patients will be having hypoalbuminemia and they are very much immunocompromised during the time of obstruction. So, when I go and do anastomosis at the time, it is having high chance of leak. If I do resection and anastomosis, it do not it don't heal. Therefore, I do a simple bypass procedure without resection. But definitely, I am going to do resection. When? After ATT is started, we will do it. Interferon gamma release assays used to detect subclinical infection. Okay. If patient presents with obstruction, very sick and we do only ileo transverse bypass. After completing the course, we must do right hemicolectomy to avoid blind loop syndrome. A straightforward line from the book. So, please do not get confused in this. It is a classical question. Okay. False regarding this disease. 
I request you to please observe the, observe the picture. This is a CT scan. CT scan shows stomach is very much distended along with the duodenum is also distended like this. So, stomach and duodenum are distended up to third part it is distended you can see up to third part is distended and after that there is one vessel prominently seen that is SMA. So, SMA is compressing the third part of duodenum what is this disease what is the name of this disease SMA compressing the third part of duodenum is known as Wilkie disease SMA syndrome and also known as cast syndrome. So, Wilkie disease, SMA syndrome, cast syndrome is this classical finding. So, Wilkie, SMA, cast syndrome. Very good, uh, Squire, very good. So, this is a case of Wilkie's disease or SMA syndrome. Let me explain. In Wilkie's disease, what happens? Wilkie's disease is very common in young females, tall, thin females who went for dieting. They are mostly bulimia cases. So, they go for dieting and therefore, the this is the iota and this is the SMA crossing the third part of duodenum. Usually, people have fat in this place. As this fat is lost, third part of duodenum is compressed by SMA, resulting in classical clinical features of GOO. So, this can also happen following a body cast application, especially for uh, spine injuries. They used to put a body cast, they can also get this. Very rare in obese people, please remember, rare in obese people. So, these cases are treated in those days by a surgery like this. We will go and do a bypass like this with a duodeno jejunal anastomosis. This is an old treatment. It is not done now. So, what are the treatment done now? Duodeno jejunostomy is not done. Now, we are doing a simplified operation. See, this is a ligament of treats. What I will do now is I will cut the ligament of treats and I will dissect and take the jejun, uh, duodenum out of this narrowing point like this. You can see. I have just mobilized the duodenum out of this occlusion. This procedure is known as strong procedure. So, the narrowed part is here, no, that through from the narrowed part, I will take out the duodenum completely and that is known as strong procedure. It is more simplified procedure, no anastomosis, so patient recovers very well. So, presence with bilious vomiting is the answer, not non-bilious vomiting. Thin females, third part strong procedure is done is correct. So, answer is D, classically the answer is D. Okay, yeah, mobilizing is known as strong procedure. So, we are coming to a very interesting question now. 40 years female Mrs. Kamalam from Tamil Nadu underwent laparoscopic RYGB surgery for morbid obesity. For RYGB surgery, they underwent for morbid obesity. She did not come for proper follow up. 3 months later, the patient returned back in a wheelchair. 3 months back, the patient who underwent a lap laparoscopic Ruan Y gastric bypass is coming in a wheelchair. She is unable to walk. What she developed? She developed polyneuropathy, paresthesia up to her chest. She tells she is not taking any supportive medicine and lost 20 kg. So, what is the problem happened? It is a malabsorptive surgery. Please remember, it is a malabsorptive surgery. So, she had severe deficiency of vitamin B1. Therefore, she developed failure of B1 resulted in bariatric beriberi. This is known as bariatric beriberi. The thiamine deficiency known as bariatric periphery. Therefore, supplement this patient with thiamine and other multivitamin. That is the correct answer. Okay. So, this is a direct paragraph from Bailey and Love, except for the Tamil Nadu and Mrs. Kamala. Okay. So, beriberi known as bariatric beriberi. Ideal treatment is injection B1 thiamine. This ideal injection is B1 thiamine is injected. 50 years old Rama, another bariatric question, underwent sleeve gastrectomy and went home on third post-op day. She is fine on the day of discharge. On 10th post-op day, she presents to hospital with severe abdominal pain. Her pulse rate is 120, BP 100, temperature 100. Surgeon who examined noted minimal guarding in the upper abdomen. What is the next step? So, I am suspecting a leak from sleeve which can happen up to 30 days. Please remember, leak from sleeve can happen up to 30 days there can be leak. And you know very well these patients are very much big. Uh, these patients may have, uh, uh, yes, B B12 also can happen, but it is not there in the chai. So, you have go for supplement with thiamine, okay. So, even B12 deficiency might be the chai, but answer in this question is only thiamine. I have not put a B12 deficiency here, no. So, better answer is go for vitamin B1 from the chai. So, all deficiency will be there. Please remember B1, B2, B6. Vitamin A, D, E, K, everything will be uh, deficient in this bariatric malabsorptive operations. Okay. So, whichever is there suitable for your question, you can put. Uh, what is ideal treatment for a leak? 
what is the next step if you suspect a leak simple question so please remember clinical findings will not be guiding you in a bariatric patient because they have this much of fat when you palpate you cannot find out there is a leak x-ray zero use it will not show iron and diaphragm ultrasound will be very difficult to penetrate this fat and find out the pathology therefore the next immediate investigation is urgent ct is done even ct may not be that much correct if you have a doubt go next step for diagnostic laparoscopy just follow this order so first answer is x-ray or ultrasound are no use therefore we do a ct scan if ct scan is still doubtful you can even go for a diagnostic laparoscopy because leak is a very dangerous complication of bariatric surgery and these patients will die the most common cause of yearly death is due to leak okay eight years child with history of passing blood in the stools answer is over on examination no significant finding seen technetium 99 scan shows ectopic mucosa in terminal ileum so your answer is meckel's diverticulum so the question is on meckel's diverticulum in children question is on meckel's diverticulum in children so it is a persistence of distal part of vitreo intestinal duct is totally wrong it is persistence of proximal part can anybody tell me what is the persistence of distal part of vitreo intestinal duct it is raspberry tumor rule of 2 will be seen is absolutely wrong rule of 2 is for adults 2 inch in length 2 feet proximal to the ileocecal junction how can in a, in a baby it will be 2 feet proximal to ileocecal junction the total bowel length in a small child will be only 2 feet or 3 feet okay that is wrong bleeding is most common complication is absolutely correct most common cause of bleeding in children is meckel's investigation of choice is not enterocolysis it is technetium 99m pertechnate scan because that patients will have ectopic mucosa in this place ectopic mucosa can be diagnosed by technetium scan and also in children you should not do this operation wedge resection is absolutely absolutely contraindicated because i may miss the ectopic mucosa always do a resection of the bowel and anastomosis so children we should do resection and anastomosis not by wedge method resect the bowel and anastomosis okay yes that's correct simple question but make you think so much okay 70 years old male presenting to your clinic with a severe glossitis yes here comes your question patient having a p12 deficiency the complaints of severe weight loss malabsorption shilling test is positive so answer is patient is having b12 deficiency and hence injection vitamin b12 was given but there is no response growth and that will consume b12 and the patient may develop b12 deficiency therefore hence barium meal follow through done which shows the following finding jejunal diverticulosis the treatment is only antibiotics are enough when there is a recurrence of this problem we will go for a resection okay please remember 27th question simple question so 28th question mr kumaresan from a village to hospital with the clinical features of flushing and bright red patchy flushing so flushing with a bright red patchy flushing is a feature of gastric neuroendocrine tumors on history is having diarrhea and weight loss so i am now going to evaluate for a patient with carcinoid syndrome what are the things you should know investigation of choice to diagnose carcinoid syndrome is very simple 24 hours urinary 5 hydroxy indolestic acid and chromogranin and synaptophysin to locate the tumor is done with srs dotate copper dotate and gallium dotate are used to locate so people used to think that fluorodeoxyglucose is best for all pet ct related things but please remember fdg is not useful for carcinoid why is it so because carcinoid tumors have low ki67 index carcinoid tumor has low ki67 index please don't forget please low ki67 index fdg is not sensitive so dotate is best for metastasis also that is the question you can see now in to diagnose the condition 24 hours urinary 5 haa okay 5 haa is there to locate for liver meds yes i can use mri only for liver meds locate the lesion dot at it is used to look for meds fdg pet, pet is only 33 percent sensitive please don't forget this fdg pet is only 33 percent sensitive dot at it is 90 percent sensitive for locating the meds so very interesting question as well. such a though it looks like a very big question this is a question on a simple concept you are going to read this question and you will understand mr vinay singh from punjab 40 years came to your clinic in chennai with the clinical features of severe diarrhea past seven days with occasional bleeding per rectum he had a similar com complaints last month got treatment in punjab and got rectified he didn't bring the records on further history is telling is having some skin lesions on his body as shown in the image 
on examination is abdomen nothing specific noted he is having uh, hemoglobin low WBC count is high bilirubin is 2.4 P and CA is positive diagnosis over what is P and CA positive P and CA positive is ulcerative colitis ok it is a case of ulcerative colitis hope you are uh, you are able to visualize my thing and you are clear can you tell me what is positive in Crohn's disease Crohn's disease is dash is positive anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody ulcerative colitis p anca is positive what will be the wrong statement regarding this patient so what is this skin lesion it is known as pyoderma gangrenosum it is a skin lesion known as pyoderma gangrenosum is seen here i will advise him to undergo colonoscopy to rule out ulcerative colitis the skin lesions are to be excised no need of excising the skin lesion they are not pre malignant they will disappear when you start steroids when you start steroids they will disappear okay Yes, steroids will resolve pyoderma gangrenosum as well as erythema nodosum. This is pyoderma gangrenosum. Okay. We have to rule out liver involvement. What liver involvement happen? Primary sclerosing cholangitis can happen. There is jaundice, therefore. First line drug is mesalamine and steroids. This condition, ulcerative colitis, is premalignant. So, a little mistake in the grammar. Al this, this disease is premalignant. This disease is premalignant. So, the answer here is. B excise the skin lesion because they are pre-malignant is wrong. Very good, Prajya. That is correct. Asca is seen in Crohn's disease. So it's a classical case related to a complaint of ulcerative colitis with extra intestinal manifestations. So please remember, most common extra intestinal manifestation is fatty liver. Jaundice in a ulcerative colitis patient is due to primary sclerosing cholangitis. Most common skin manifestation is pyoderma gangrenosum pyoderma gangrenosum is the most common skin manifestation so in this irreversible one is psc all other things will reverse irreversible lesion is primary sclerosing cholangitis all other conditions will reverse in a ulcerative colitis treatment mrs kumari underwent right hemicolectomy for a colon cancer with obstruction as emergency so she had a cancer in the right colon she underwent an emergency right colectomy Surgeon examined the liver and all, there is no meds. Specimen report received shows growth involving muscularis propria and 15 nodes are positive. 15 nodes positive means it is stage 3, but not stage 4. Stage 4 is metastasis, stage 3 cancer. So, stage 3 cancer, we will start giving them the post operative adjuvant chemotherapy known as Falfox. So, folinic acid, 5 FU oxaliplatin is a gold standard chemotherapy given in colon cancers fall fox therapy and after surgery colon cancer patients will need 3c we have to measure cea we should do colonoscopy we should do ct scan for five years we have to keep the patient in follow-up so colon cancer patient after surgery what are the things to be done in the post-operative follow-up cea should be done every three months for two years and every six months for five years ct abdomen is done every year once colonoscopy is done every year once Okay, please do not forget this point. So, CEA must be done, colonoscopy done, patient should undergo 6 cycles of alpha yes, must undergo KRAS mutational study. So, when you have read colon cancer in depth, you will know KRAS mutation study is done only for stage 4 cases, only for stage 4 metastatic cases, not needed for stage 3. When stage 4 cases, KRAS is positive, what I will do? KRAS is negative, what I will do? KRAS negative cases will receive monoclonal antibodies. Please remember. Therefore, I should do KRAS mutational study to plan for monoclonal antibodies. Carry home MCQ point is KRAS mutation is a must in stage 4 cases. Why? To decide giving on monoclonal antibodies. This is enough for neat PG level. Okay. So, Mr. Abbas, 70 years male,